Larry and Judith Carlin lived in the Fountain Grove neighborhood of Santa Rosa. They were practically neighbors to their daughter Jennifer Rossett and her husband Paul and their two boys. The night of the fire, both families fled and found refuge at the Finley Center. Both families had lost their homes. Literally, and I know this is strange, because the house is supposedly four walls, I've often felt like I needed to apologize to the house. Dumb. But, because I've always felt when, maybe not so much in the early apartments when we were first married and moving every couple of years, but the places we stayed in longer as we got further along, that there was always a chemistry that you picked up when you went into a house or an apartment, that it was right for you, that you could live there. And I had that the minute I walked into the door with that house, with the Malibu house. And I know it's inanimate, but so be it. We had survived six fires, six, six or seven evacuations in Malibu over 25 years. We were, we were, we were, our home wasn't gonna burn down. That was pretty, pretty much it. And then, and then Jen, my daughter who lived uh, uh, above us, somebody had, I think somebody had text, uh, uh, texted her a picture of her house. And like at 1.30 or so in the morning, two o'clock, she knew her house. I, you know, I was checking my phone for our alarm system because I wanted to, I knew my alarm system could take pictures and I was taking, trying to take photos of the house. And I looked up at my husband and he was, all of a sudden he, he literally turned white and he was holding his phone. It said alarm triggered, motion detector. Uh, and then it went off again. And I got seven or eight in a row, bing, 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 bing. Uh, it, it was glass break. That's the message, glass break family room, glass break kitchen, glass break dining room, uh, motion detected front door. And I was like, oh my God, my house is dying. And he's going like, like this, like now, now. And I run over to him. And it took three minutes from the point it started to the point there's like power, uh, the panel failed and it was gone. And I was tr desperately trying to get a photo to take, but nothing, it didn't do it. But I could see it just, move through the house and just stop when the panel melted, I suppose. That's when it felt real. I was like, oh shit, our house is gone. I was too naive to really know what was going to be ahead. And this is hopefully a once in a lifetime experience. And I didn't see any further than where we were gonna stay and making sure that we had some clothes on our backs. I mean, you have nothing, so you need everything. And that is really time consuming and really preoccupying. And there were these mad shopping expeditions to Bed Bath & Beyond and Costco and Target and throwing stuff into, you know, the, the carts. There's a lot of stuff in the beginning that's actually a really good distraction that prevents you from sort of sitting in the corner and rocking, you know. Whatever I bought, I was going to wear and live with. And um, it's really only been recently that I actually went out because it's been six months and some of what I got was like you were grabbing stuff that looked like it would fit you. And like now we're settled. My parents are settled. We're settled. And now there's this kind of long road ahead of us of rebuilding and all of the ups and downs that come with that. And right, we just passed the six month mark and there was a lot of information that came out about how at six months it can get really, really hard emotionally. And at the time I was like, huh, oh, that's interesting. And now I'm like deep in it. I mean, I feel like I'm in a really rough, place um, and there aren't the distractions, kind of life has resumed its new normal 
pace for now. It's like the reality of the whole thing sets in. And I think you realize the magnitude, the enormity of what you've gone through and what you're still facing. I mean, will the insurance money cover the rebuild? Um, I don't know when we're gonna have the answer to that. I mean, on the plus side, we have the a builder and we have the plans. It just kind of is an unknown that's very scary because if you don't have the money to rebuild, the housing that's available is crazily priced. And we're basically retired. It's just, our older son did, didn't exhibit a lot of behavioral symptoms or anything after the fire. Our younger one did, it was really, really hard for him. Our older one seemed like he was okay until this last week when his behavior was um, questionable. And instead of just kind of reacting to him, I asked him if he was okay, he's nine. And I asked, I said, are you okay? What, you know, how are you doing? And he just broke down sobbing and said, I'm sad about the fire. I'm sad that our, our house is gone. I just want my life back. Oh. And I think that's kind of how we all feel. Like we're in this limbo. We know we're not gonna be in it forever, but you just want your life back. <laughs>